This is a 50-year-old meter. This is a one-year-old state-of-the-art mirrorless camera. And this is Rusty Rita, aka the Angel of the North. Join me today as I compare a 50-year-old meter with a state-of-the-art mirrorless camera and see how well they can expose the Angel. going to do today is we're going to take this meter which uh, I inherited from my uh, late uncle. Uh, he was an avid photographer and he used to use this with his Hasselblad 500C. Um, it's an amazing bit of technology. Um, you would have seen these around in the 1970s into the 80s. People using SLRs in the 80s had built-in uh, metering but uh, people using medium format would still use a, a proper light meter. Um, wonderful bit of kit. On the Outside it looks incredibly complex, but it really isn't. If you know your exposure triangle, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. The inner dial here, you uh, dial in your ISO or ASO, also DIN, which is uh, an obscure and obsolete uh, German film rating speed. Um, and on the outer dials, you've got your shutter speed and your aperture and your EV value. The EV reading you take off of the dial here by pressing this little button here, and then you dial it in here, the EV levels, and then you read off your shutter speed and aperture. It's as simple as that. This camera has four exposure meter modes. It's got a matrix meter mode, it's got a center weighted meter mode, it's got an average meter mode, and it's got a spot meter mode. I'm gonna shoot four shots, one in each mode, apply them manually, uh, using manual exposure, and then I'm going to read again, a reflected light reading using this light meter, and we'll apply those settings to this camera, and then we'll do an instant light reading, which is something that this can't do. Now, an instant light reading is where you actually measure the light falling on the subject, rather reflecting from it and the reason I've actually chosen the angel is because she's a big old dark colored statue against a bright sky now that makes it hard to meet her even in the most modern technologies I want to see how an incident light reading on this 50 year old meter will stack up to my mirrorless camera here so let's get on with it. I'm going to shoot the first shots on the Fuji, the four shots uh, with each of the exposure modes, and then we'll meet her with this and see how we get on. So that's the four shots taken on the Fuji X-H2. Um, we've done matrix, we've done center weighted, we've done spot. I've pointed the spot at the uh, torso of the angel and then we've done average. And I've nailed the exposure in the center of the metered reading for each of those, set to f5.6 and adjusting the, app, uh, adjusting the shutter speed to a suit. Let's now take a reflected light reading with this and apply those settings and see how that comes out. Now the EV reading is actually going to be over 10, so for that uh, reason we're going to leave the baffle on. If the light's quite low and the uh, EV reading is below 10, we actually have to open this little baffle here and allow more light onto the sensor. But in this case, as you can see, it's quite bright behind me, so we don't need the baffle. We'll pop that back on and we'll take the light reading. So the way you do it is you take it uh, sideways like this, you point the sensor at your subject and you press this button on the top here and I'm getting an EV reading of 11. Uh, so what I now do is I dial in 11 on this dial here. So we bring this large red arrow around to 11. And we simply read off uh, the shutter speed for 5.6, which is 150th of a second. Um, so basically at a third of a stop up from 125th. So let's dial that in, take that shot and see how it comes out. So now we're going to do the instant light reading. 
This is an Invercone. Uh, I bought it off of eBay for £7.50, I think it was, because uh, this didn't actually have the original one with it. It pops over the baffle like this, just literally clips on like that. Um, again, if the EV is below 10, you open up the baffle and uh, then pop the Invercone on. And now I'm going to run up to the Angel, take an instant light reading and apply those settings to the camera. See you in a minute. So here I am at the uh, the base of the statue. Sun's just over there coming up. Motorway over there, hopefully not too much noise. Beautiful views out over there. And I'm going to do an instant light reading, which is giving me EV11, slightly over EV11. We'll dial that in. And again, at 5.6, that's giving us a 200th of a second now. So let's go and dial that into the camera, see what we get. So that's the shots done. Fairly straightforward. Obviously, uh, with modern technology, you can now view things on screens, you can check histograms, you can check clipping. You don't need to use an instant light reading and run up to your subject and do it. You can do it all on a modern mirrorless camera without uh, having to use one of these. But it's a beautiful bit of kit. It's 50 years old. It belonged to a relative of mine who had an amazing passion for photography and I just feel it needs to be used sometime. As you know I have a GFX 50 medium format digital camera. I use that very much like a film camera and I can really see myself coming out with this and using this uh, probably as a reflected light reader to see how they image, those images come out on the medium format camera. Back to Roots film style photography using digital cameras. So that's it from here. I'm going to go home, drop these images into Lightroom and we'll have a look at how they come out and compare the meter readings with each other, see which one nailed the angel the best. Join me back in the studio. So welcome back to the studio. Um, as you can see on the screens here, I have the images in the Lightroom ready to look at. What you might actually see is there's two sets of images and there's a reason for that. I reshot this video. Um, the video that you saw of me at the Angel was the second attempt at it. I reshot it because there were some issues with the sound. The first attempt was actually much better in terms of lighting. Um, it was a very grey day, it had this sort of leaden light grey sky behind the angel, which actually makes it more difficult for the meter to actually get the correct exposure. In the bright sunny sunshine you've got the relatively deep blue sky and the nice green and the, and the angel. Meters are not quite as fooled by that as they would be by a very bright leaden sky behind it. Um, so I'm going to go through both of those sets of images and we'll have a look at them one by one. What we'll do is we'll just look at them visually and then we'll have a look at the histograms and uh, see how well the exposures have come out. So let's get into it. We'll have a look on Lightroom and see how they look. So here we are in Lightroom. Um, at the top we've got the images taken on the previous day in the less ideal conditions and at the bottom we've got the images taken uh, when I actually shot this video. Um, from left to right we've got the matrix metering, uh, we've got the center weighted metering, we've got the spot metering, we've got the average metering on the X-H2 and then the final two images are the reflected light reading and the instant light reading on the Western Master 5. So we'll go through these one by one and this is matrix on the X-H2, very good image, um, slightly underexposed, you've got more to the left than the right on the histogram, absolutely no clipping, plenty of room to work with, uh, really good exposure. Moving to the centre weighted, uh, you can see that we are a little bit more underexposed. Um, we're not clipping in the blacks though, so we still have pl plenty of latitude to work with this image, but it is uh, significantly darker than the matrix metering. Moving over to spot metering, you can see there's a big, big difference here. The spot was positioned on the torso of the statue of the angel, um, which as you can see is already quite dark um, and it's done a really good job in holding that dark rusty still um, at the expense of the sky behind. But um, again, looking at the histogram, there's no clipping. Everything's still within the histogram um, and that looks a, a pretty salvageable image. I'm sure you can pull this sky down very, very easily whilst maintaining plenty of detail in the angel herself. 
Uh, we'll move over to the next one. This is the average metering. Again, pretty good result. And as you would expect, the histogram is pretty much in the middle and looking very, very good. So we'll go over to the Western Master 5 now, and this is the reflected light reading. And as you can see, there's hardly any difference between a reflected light reading and the average light reading from the X-H2. Perhaps to be expected, um, they're taking an overall reading of the whole scene um, of the light reflected onto them and averaging it out uh, in the case of the X-H2. So let's go to the instant light reading, which is where I walked up to the statue and measured the light falling on the statue rather than reflected from it. And you can see it's almost identical to the reflected one. I think the reason for this is that the, the lighting is fairly even here and you've got the blue sky, the green and the, the rust colored steel here. They've all kind of evened out so that the reflected and the instant light reading are pretty much the same. However, if we go over to the more sort of inclement weather conditions and have a look at those, this, I think the opening shot, this is matrix metering and you will see that uh, the the lighting conditions are much more difficult. You've got no definition in the, the statue itself. However, if you look at the uh, histogram, everything is there and you'll still get definition by pulling the shadows up and you'll still be able to bring the sky down. We'll do that at the end of the video um, with this and the Western version as well. Um, as you can see, zooming in, there is detail in the angel itself. So if we go to the center weighted, um, this is even darker. Again, no clipping. There's still, uh, all the detail was still in the image. It's uh, underexposed, but I'm sure if we brought the exposure up and then added the shadows, we'd still get a very, very usable image out of that. Heading over to the spot metering. Uh, the spot metering again from the torso, um, as you can see, much, much brighter. It's trying to get that uh, definition in the still and indeed has done. And I'm sure as you can see from the histogram, everything's still inside the histogram. So this is a very, very workable image. And lastly, we'll go over to the average metering. Uh, so this is average on the X-H2, um, pretty similar to the first two. Uh, you've still got definition in there. You can still pull it back. There's no clipping at all. It's a pretty good result. So if we go over to the Western Master 5 in these conditions, this is the reflected light, um, very similar again to the average, um, hardly any movement, in fact, no movement in the histogram at all. So, so very, very similar result to the average metering on the X-H2, very, very impressive. Now, if we go over to the instant light room where I walk up to the statue, we see a little bit of a difference there. The, uh, measuring the light falling on the statue has brightened the statue up itself because I'm not pointing that light meter into a bright, bright sky. Um, I'm pointing it away from the statue, reading the light that's actually falling on the statue. And that's given us uh, a more usable result in terms of uh, the shadows in the statue itself. So let's just go to one of the darker images. Um, We'll go to this one here, it's probably the darkest of them all. You can see that if I bring the exposure up into the middle, then bring the shadows up, I've got definition in the statue and I can still bring the highlights down as well, a little bit like that. I have actually brought some noise into the image here in the shadow areas. So, so in terms of metering, the one to work from would be the one that's actually got the most definition in the shadows itself, which would be either the spot meter version or the incident light version. Um, if we just bring these up very slightly, uh, bring the shadows up on this one. There we go. It has to go a lot less uh, distance on the slider. And if I zoom in, uh, there's a lot less noise in that image. So it really makes a difference using an instant light reading or using a spot metering to make sure that you maintain the correct exposure for the darker areas rather than an overall exposure, then lightening up the shadows in Lightroom. As you can see, as, as I suggested at uh, the beginning here, um, it was actually the, the dark leaden skies that um, made it harder for the Fuji meter and indeed the reflected light reading from the Western Master 5 to get an accurate reading. On the bright blue sky, sunny day, um, both meters worked really, really well. When we went to the leaden skies, the spot metering on the Fuji worked really well to get the details in the Angel. And the instant light reading on the Western Master 5 also gave us a really nice reading. I think the thing to, to take from this is that 
This 50 year old meter still works really, really well. It's accurate and it's uh, incident light reading gives you a really good uh, reading when you're trying to get a subject um, spot on. And the reflected right, right reading is very good for general scenes where the subject is not backlit. What we really need to take into consideration is the cameras these days. Digital cameras have a much wider dynamic range than um, older film-based cameras, particularly if you were shooting on transparency film, um, your latitude there was v perhaps half a stop. On these cameras, you can go one and a half, perhaps even two stops over or under and still get a usable image out of this. As you saw from all of those images, not a single one of them metered either by the camera or by the Western 5 clipped at all, um, which is a very, very good result. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative. If it has, uh, please give me a like and a subscription. If you've got any comments, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer any questions that you might have. Um, thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.